In the name of our Savior, born this very night, we begin with prayer. Lord Jesus, you came down to lie in a manger with animals and shepherds and angels praising you. So may we also praise your name and be filled with your spirit at the joy of your birth. Amen. Norwegian adventure junkie Christopher Glested recently made a phone call just last week deep within the wilderness of the Northwest Territories. He had been out in the bush for over six months, completely alone, living beside a mosquito-infested lake, just so he could get away from it all, living off the land, hunting and fishing and trapping and surviving all on his own. Finally, last week, he made a phone call to have a pilot come and pick him up after six months alone. At one point, he said in an interview after that he didn't say a single word out loud for two weeks. What sort of lesson did he learn after this kind of experience? When asked, his answer was very simple. He said, people are not meant to be alone. I can vouch for that. Now, you don't have to go off and spend six months in the Northwest Territories all by yourself to figure that out. We are not meant to be alone. We were created to be social creatures. We need each other deeply. In fact, God said when he made Adam in the very beginning of time, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. We need each other. We need each other's company and support and love. We are meant to have each other. And, and so if you are alone, it, it can hurt you deeply. In fact, people can die from being alone. Little babies who are cared for and provided with food and drink and their diapers are changed but never touched, as some people have done, they die from that isolation. Couples who have been married for 40 or 50 years and then one of them is taken home to heaven, it's not so uncommon for the other to die shortly after of a broken heart. And if you are alone or feel alone, Christmas can actually make you feel even lonelier. But it's even deeper than that. When God made us not to be alone, he also made us to need him deeply. God made us so that we would yearn to be with him. And so when bad things happen, when heartache and tragedy hits the lives of different people, we cry out, where are you, God? What are you doing? What is going on? Where are you? Even unbelievers will say that kind of thing. Where are you? If we feel that God is absent, that he doesn't care for us, that he's not in our lives, that he doesn't exist, well, then that makes our entire existence or suffering or purpose empty and pointless. That's not how it was at the beginning. When God first made Adam and Eve, he actually was with them in a real way. He walked with them in the Garden of Eden. He talked with them as if it was no big deal. But then they fell into sin. And this great separation began between God and us so that we cried out, Where are you, God? And the people who lived long before us felt this, this hole for God so deep that they would carve statues of wood or stone and bow down to them and pray to them as if those things were God. We need God so deeply. This hole for God is so great that if we don't find him, we will try to stuff something else inside of that hole to fill in place of God. Whether that thing be mm, perhaps career or money or family or 
social causes or hockey or the Canadian wilderness. Whatever that thing is, we try to stuff it into the hole that is built and made only for God, but we find that they don't satisfy us because they're not God. And we are left wondering what point is there to life if God is not here. I think that those shepherds who were out in the fields around Bethlehem could understand, the shepherds from our Christmas story. You see, they lived a particularly lonely life. Being alone with the sheep out in the Judean desert and wilderness for days, possibly weeks at a time, with no one to talk to except themselves, No one around them, their families are far away because they had to search for good food and water to give to their flocks. And when they found it, they might have to stay there for long periods of time. And you have to wonder, those shepherds were people like us. Did they not look up at the sky, at the stars at night with no sound but the bleeding of the sheep and wonder, Where are you, God? Where are you? What are you doing to come to us? It's been 400 years since one of your prophets was here. Where are you? Why aren't you acting in the world? And then, one random night, as they're out there minding their own business, looking up at the stars once again, everything changes. We read from our gospel lesson. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great, that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. It's funny, even though when there are times when we wish God was here, we say, where are you, God? If God actually showed up, or even if just one of his angels appeared, Every time we hear that in the Bible, people are terrified. They are scared, just like the shepherds in this story. Scared because when we broken and sinful people are confronted with the holy presence of God, it terrifies us. And we don't want God around. Instead, we run away. We want to run away the way that bugs and rats run away when someone turns on the light. God realizes this. He understands that we can't stand to be in his holy presence. And yet we want him at the same time. And he understands that to appear in all of his justice and with all of his holiness, he would destroy us. Even if one of his angels comes, as we see in the fear of the shepherds. So, what he does is he answers this need we have to be with him in the most gentle and humble of ways. You heard it in the angel's message. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. The angel's message is simple, and it's also profound. You are not alone. God is with us. God is with us, not in some kind of nice abstract way or like a greeting card or the way someone might try to comfort someone who's lost a family member. Oh, they're still with you in spirit. No, God is with us in the most profound of ways. The God who made everything, who created the universe, who created the world that we live in, who created us, has himself become 
one of us. He has humbled himself to be with us. There is no more profound way that God could be with us. There's no more profound way that you could, you could be with someone else than to join them, to be with them at their side. Someone is in the hospital and you go to comfort them at their bedside. That is one of the greatest comforts you can offer them. If someone is in prison and you go to visit them and encourage them, that's one of the greatest things you can do. To come along some, alongside someone, to put your arm around them and to be with them, well, that's what God is doing. He's coming alongside of us and being one of us, being born in the same way that we are born. God with us is a big deal. In fact, it's the biggest deal because Jesus not only can say, well, I know what it's like to be a human being because I am one. He not only walks in our shoes, but he takes on himself all of our brokenness, all of our sin, all of the secret and shameful thoughts that we might have that we don't want anyone to know about. He takes them on himself so that he can walk the loneliest of roads for us. To walk in isolation to the cross. To receive in himself the punishment that God gives to all who are sinners. Jesus takes it on himself. He dies for us. And then he rises from the dead three days later so that he can tell you and me, born at Christmas and risen from the dead, I am with you. In fact, that's what Jesus' name, his special name that we celebrate at Christmas means. Emmanuel, God is with us. God came to be with us so that the, the, the angel's message, when they sang to the shepherds, a savior has been born to you this night, the city of David, that this might be the greatest of news. God is with us so that one day we can be with him in heaven. We can see him face to face. We can live with him. We can stand before him in all of his holy presence. And we can bask in the glory that he gives us, that the angels sang of that Christmas night. It took... Christopher Gleisted, this Norwegian adventure junkie, six months in the wilderness, totally alone for him to be able to say, you know what, we are not meant to be alone. We don't have to do that. We simply can go with the shepherds who understood the joy of this message that God is with us and then shared it with everyone they knew telling everyone because the news was so great they could no longer be alone. They had to tell someone. They had to find others and share this news. And so they also invite us to come to Bethlehem to look in the manger to see we are not alone. God is with us. Amen.